harmony on the highway to happiness. I used to come as a, with my family every holiday uh, throughout the year. Used to, two, two, three times a year, we'd drive from BC to Edmonton. And those were, were family trips, and they were anything but harmonious. I don't know if you've ever had those family trips, right? There, was, there wasn't a lot of peace in that. Oh, there was moments of peace and then moments of, of extreme storm and then peace and then storm. And, you know, as, as someone's knee would come into your knee space, you know, or elbow to your elbow space. And we didn't have, you know, video games. Well, we did have little video games. These nine volt kind of like two dimensional things with little, you know, and, and they would last about 20 minutes. And then you're, you know, into the 12 hour trip. And then you're like, okay, now you're bored. And my parents would buy like Archie comics for us to try to keep us occupied and not fighting, but they always inevitably ended up grading on each other and being, you know, you know, not nice to one another. And it was, you know, there was yelling and, you know, and, and it, when I was really young, we had this big van, which at least you could kind of get up and jump around. And those are the days when we didn't have seat belts. It was awesome. You know, you could just sort of bounce around the van. And it, but then we bought these, you know, economical car. Price of gas were going up. We got this little Mazda and then we're just squished in there. And we're, we're just longing for that big van, you know, and we're fighting all the way to Edmonton. And so harmony on the highway to happiness this is the reality is that anytime you put two people together or three people or four people, you're going to encounter some conflict, some abrasion. And, and as Jesus talks about the, the highway to happiness, he says, you know, blessed are the peacemakers, uh, the, the people that, that are able to, to get through that, the, the conflict that comes in life and bring peace, you know. And, and so, so as we celebrate this week, uh, Family Day, and last Wednesday was Valentine's Day, we're aware of this need to, to be peaceful in our relationships, right? I, I went to Safeway at 5 p.m. on Valentine's Day. And it was so funny because when you walk in those one doors at Safeway, you walk right into the floral section, right? And it's just guys like milling around 5 p.m. and in Safeway. And then you just, just look on their, on their face like, oh, no. You know, and someone at work must have reminded them. There they are, and they're, they're just frantic. They're going through the cards. Or the flowers are just ripping off the shelves there. And it was, it was comical because you know if they came home without something, that there would not be peace in that house that night, right? So they're, so they're anxious, you know, and, they're, you know, and, and this is the reality. And, and so as we talk about family day, you know, like, maybe it brings up in your mind some of the conflict that you have, maybe even right now with some of your family. And Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers, that, that there can be harmony on the highway to happiness, and that being a peacemaker is a key part of that. And so we're, we're going to journey through this. But before we do that, let's just begin and talk about the, um, the whole, you know, sermon that leads up to this point. In ch chapter 5, verse 1 of Matthew, this is Jesus' first recorded sermon. Matthew, who is a first century eyewitness of Jesus, records this gospel. It's reliable. It's trustworthy. Despite that there are these people out there like, oh, the gospels aren't true. Jesus didn't really exist. Or he did, but he wasn't who he said he was. He didn't do anything miraculous. Well, that's not true because the first century people are telling us, yeah, this is what really happened. And there's too many accounts to, to, to just, just discount it. But of course, if Jesus isn't divine, if he's not mirac miracle a miracle worker, then you don't need to listen to him. You don't need to respect him. You don't need to, to honor him. You don't need to take what he says seriously. But he is who he says he is. And Matthew 5 is his first gospel. He says, here's the highway to happiness. He says, when he saw the crowds, he went up the mountain and he sat down and his disciples came to him. Then he began to teach them by saying, again, not like some high rocky crag like you see when you're driving into Banff. Like this is like a hillside. This is like the hill that kind of, that when you go down to the North Saskatchewan River, like it's one of those kind of hills. He's sitting there on the hillside with his disciples, and he begins to teach them by saying, blessed or happy are the poor in spirit, for the kingdom of heaven belongs to them. Blessed or happy are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed or happy are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed or happy are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. And then it gets to verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. Maybe you've got an image of peace in your mind when you think of peace. Maybe it's one of these, this is the, maybe your image, it's like this dove with this olive branch. I mean, this is really, literally comes from the, the story of Noah, right? Where he sent the dove out and then it comes back with a branch. Yes, God has, has restored life to the earth and we can now repopulate it, you know? But so, so, you know, maybe this is the image you have. Maybe this is the image you have when you think about peace. You know, Fillmore, right? From, from cars, right? Yeah, peace, man. You know, like, maybe this is what you're thinking, right? I, it depends on your generation, all right? But, but we all have some image. Maybe it's a blue beret of the United Nations. I don't know what your image of peace is, but let's go back to the verse so you don't get distracted by these... Uh, Crazy images. 
Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the children of God. We'll tear us apart and we'll rebuild it back together. But the most important thing as we begin is just understand, like, what is he talking about when he says peace? Like, what does he mean? Like, is this some, like, you know, you know yin-yang kind of inner soul thing of emptiness and, and, you know, just kind of free your mind so that, that the universe can just come into that vacuum and fill you up? That, that's what a lot of people think peace is. Peace is just the emptying of yourself so, the, so that the powers of the force of the universe can, can fill your soul. That is not the biblical idea of peace, okay? That's why we're careful when we participate in certain exercise and activities that are like, oh, empty yourself, you know, just, you know, dezone yourself, you know, you know f- f- find your, 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 your inner place and your, your sanctum. And, and what the Bible says actually is, is, that we, is that we're supposed to clear our minds so that we can think about the things of God and meditate on, on who he is and think about, about our relationship with him. And, and, and meditation is not an emptying and it's actually a filling ourselves with, with things that God would think and, and, and with his character and with, with, with his creation. So when we go to the creation, it's not like the power of the universe is, is filling us up. We're looking at creation. We're out in the, in the, you know, on the lake fishing, and we're up in the mountains hiking, and we're down by, you know, seeing, watching that sunset, and we're like, man, isn't the creator amazing that he could conjure up this every day? Every day that sun rises and sets, and the moon, and the stars, and, and, and these trees, and the flowers, and I mean, wow, what, 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 what kind of God do we serve that could make all this? I mean, this, is, this is true meditation, and it brings us to, to think higher things, and it, it brings our heart at peace, we're like, oh, there's a creator that, that controls this, that manages this, that, that, is, that, 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 that has it on, on, under, under his hand, and, and, and in, his, in his care, and his keep. So we're not freaked out about climate change. Why? Because we have a creator who oversees this earth and has brought us this far, and he'll, he'll take it right to the very end. He's, he's promised that in his word, so we don't get caught up on these bandwagons that are unscientific and not based on truth. Because we can have peace. But he says here, happy are the people that are peacemakers. Peace comes from that idea of, of shalom in the Old Testament. Jesus, of course, is a Jew, he grew up in studying the Hebrew scriptures. And so when he talks about peace, he's talking about shalom, which is a total well-being, a, a whole, a complete person, a person that just has everything in order and in balance, that just, just is enjoying their place in the world, in creation, and, and just happy to be who they are, where they are, doing what they're doing. And most people don't have peace. Most people are just looking out the door, looking over that fence, wondering what's ahead, what, what could I do more, what's, ne- what's next, what's next? But shalom is a sense of like, no, where I am right now, with who I'm with, doing what I'm doing, where I'm, wanna, where I'm driving, what I'm driving, living where I'm living, is the place God wants me to be. You're not looking for some elusive, you know, freedom 55 or whatever it is that's down the road. You're like, this is it right now. I mean, you might have some great moments down the road, but, but you're like, I'm okay right now because this is where God wants me to be, and I've got shalom, peace. So he says, this is the peacemakers, but it's, it's not just having peace. It's being a person that brings peace to others and to situations where there isn't peace. Uh, six times in the New Testament, God is called the God of peace. So this is a, a, a def- definition of God himself. And he said, this is the person that's bringing the very mission of God's peace into the world, the peacemakers. Um, of course, Jesus is the ultimate peacemaker. Because the problem we have is that, that like, peace is not an external issue. Peace ultimately is an internal issue. And I can tell you this, if you can look at this scientifically and, and, and quantitatively, just looking at, at all the attempts that we have made to bring peace to our world. And it's, ba- it's a Band-Aid on like a juggler vein that's been, you know, caught and it's splurting blood. We're putting Band-Aids on it. It's, we're trying to, to bring peace. And, and sometimes we slow the blood, but it just keeps flowing. And we're like, how come we can't bring peace? Because peace is an internal issue. And until you deal with the internal peace that God wants to bring to your heart, we'll never experience external peace. Some of you watching online are wondering, why don't I feel peace? And I'm doing all this stuff, and it's because you haven't dealt with the heart issue. God invites you to experience peace here first before you can now take peace out there. So our problems around the world aren't just like, okay, let's take away the, the nuclear, you know, bomb missiles from that country, and then they're going to be, we'll, we'll be peaceful. No, that's not the case, because the, key, the issue is, is the heart. 
And people who haven't made that peace with God in their heart will always find ways to, to agitate and cause problems with others. And the problems we have in our own country, you know, it's, it's a peace issue. How people have their own agenda, and they, you know, they don't want God to be part of their agenda, and it, and it creates conflict and tension and abrasion. And Jesus says, happy are those who discover my peace and then take that peace to others. And look at what it says in Matthew of Romans chapter 5, verse 1, it says, Therefore, since we have been declared righteous by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. You see? God's a God of peace, and Jesus Christ ultimately brings peace to our life. If you don't have Jesus Christ, you will never have peace. See, you'll have sort of temporary moments of, 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 of ceasefire, but you'll never know what it means to truly just be happy and content and satisfied with where you are, what you are, who you are, you know, what you're doing, where you're going. Because God wants to bring that level of peace into your life. And that comes through Jesus Christ. We have this peace. It's, it's settled. God no longer holds any of our sins against us. He's accounted it. He's, he's, he's credited all of our sins to, to Jesus' death. Okay? Jesus died. He paid for your sins. You're good. Now we're, now we're good. Now we're reconciled. We have this relationship with God now. And this peace, this possibility of peace. Uh, Colossians 1.19 says this. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in the Son and through him to reconcile all things to himself by making peace through the blood of his cross, through him, whether things on earth or things in heaven. You see that word reconcile? That wouldn't imply that, that we are, are not in a good relationship with God. But through the cross, God makes a way for us to have peace. That when we believe in Jesus Christ the, the, and, and the, his payment for our sin, we, we, we discover this, this reconciliation with God. A restoration of relationship, and with that comes peace. Many religions seek to find peace, and they do it in many different ways. But until you deal with the deepest issue of your heart, which is that sin, that, that alienation between you and God because of your sin, you never discover peace. You can, you can have, like I said, moments of ceasefire, but the true lasting peace comes from knowing that you're forgiven, that you've been given a new standing, and it comes through Jesus Christ and his blood on the cross. And of course, Ephesians 2 would say this. Uh, but now in Christ Jesus, you who used to be far away have been brought near by the blood of Christ. He's talking about, yeah, you used to be God worked through the, you know, just the Jewish nation and you had to become a Jew, but now people outside the Jewish nation can come in and be close to God. How? Through the blood of Jesus Christ. And it says, for he is our peace, the one who made both groups into one. And so when he says happy are the peacemakers or blessed are the peacemakers, he's saying happy are those or blessed are those who have just discovered what it means to follow Jesus in, in the path that he took on this earth. I mean, he's the ultimate peacemaker. And he says, if you follow me, you will, you will reflect my mission and my vision for this world, bringing peace to people's hearts so they can then bring peace into other situations in which they work and then live. He is our peace. Now, you know how it is. There is someone in every group of people that doesn't bring peace to the situation. You know, there's someone in your class that is just, a, you know, always causing issues. There's someone in your work group that, you know, when they're way sick, everyone is happier in, at, at work, right? Because they're not there. There's someone maybe in your family gatherings, you're like, oh, once cousin or uncle, someone shows, shows up, the whole thing just deep dives, boom, you know, crashing down. Because every time they come in the room, it's just, it's chaos. Some people that grew up in, in homes with abuse of, uh, or with um, substance abuse, they grow up into adults who think that if there's not a crisis, they have to create a crisis because they were so used to crisis growing up that every time they, they, they go into a peaceful situation, they have to create drama because it's not normal unless there's drama there. Some of you have families where there's triangulation, right? There, you have, you know, there's an issue between siblings, and instead of going to that sibling, that person goes to the, a different sibling to talk about that sibling, and then this, these triangles create you know, this dysfunction in the family and a lack of peace. But Jesus comes in and he kind of wades through all that and he says, I'm coming to bring you peace so you can bring others peace. But we live like there is no peace. You know, they were, after World War II, they were going through the South Pacific and, and kind of bringing the message of peace. 
And there's all these little islands there. And, and, and the Japanese had, had dropped all these Japanese soldiers on these islands. And they would show up to bring the, hey, guys, the war's over. And these guys didn't know the war was over. So as they came on the island, they start shooting at them and boom, and throwing grenades. And, you know, like, it was like, guys, like, the, the, the war's over. And they're, no, it's not. You know, and you know, they keep fighting. This is the reality of our world. Jesus is coming. Like, he's not coming with a bazooka. He's coming like, like peace. Like, hey, guys, you know, this is all, this is good. I've dealt with the issues. The Father will receive you if you believe in me. And we throw grenades at Jesus and we do, 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 we're fighting him. When all the while, he just wants us to put down our arms and discover what it means to know Jesus Christ personally. What happens to the peacemakers? They are called the children of God. You know, they're a chip off the old block, you know what I mean? And, and, and this is a Hebrew idiom, you know, uh, you know, like a, a person who was, you know, a, a bad person might be called like a son of destruction or a son of perdition, you know, but to be called the son of God would be to, to, to like, like you are a very representation of deity itself. <clears throat> you reflect and you represent him. It's funny, the Romans had this, uh, their coins would have this thing called the and it said the Pax Romana, the, the peace of God. But, it, but also would, on that image, it would, it would have the uh, you know, sons of God. So the emperor was viewed as, as, as a representation of deity. And Jesus comes along and says, well, the emperor, the Roman emperor is not really divine. It's, it, it's you, those who are on my mission of peace, who have discovered my peace and who are now sharing that peace, they're the ones who actually are the children of God, the sons of God, who are representatives of the Father in heaven, the God of peace. Um, and so he invites us to, to walk in that peace. What happens when you go to work? Uh, does this peace follow you? What happens when you go to your classroom? Uh, do you bring peace into the situation or do you bring conflict? I mean, you just, just, just look at yourself, honestly, right? When you, when, when you show up, at, you know, on, on, to play sports, how, 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 what happens out there? You know, like, are you the guy that's, that's creating the fight on the ice or are you the guy that's stopping it? Like, like what, how, how does it work? He invites you to be that agent of peace. There are those people that walk into the room and it's just like, ha, ha. And then there's others that walk in the room and you're like, no, you know, you know, ah, you know you're, you're bracing yourself. At least when I ran this camp once. And uh, so we had some, some people that weren't, well, just kind of selfish. Selfish people don't bring peace. Uh, critical people don't bring peace. Complainers don't bring peace. So we started this camp, not here, another location, and some complainers showed up. And suddenly, you know, they're complaining about this. They're complaining about that. And at least they're like, why are we doing this camp? You know, oh, you know, is there something else I can do? You know, like, we're, we're, we're just despairing the fact that, oh, this is how the camp's starting. And then these two other families showed up. And suddenly the whole tone just changed, shunk. And the camp had a whole different tone to it because of these mature peacemakers that came in and they just silenced the complainers and, and it just kind of made it way better. What that we would all be like that? That when we show up at the family gathering, it's like, oh, I'm so glad that they showed up. Because it just seems so much nicer when they're here. Or at work, they're like, man, we sure miss it when they're not here because they just bring something to, to the team that, that I can't describe. Or on your sports team, they're like, man, like, like, I don't know what, the, I'm not really into what they're into in terms of religion, but, but man, when they're here, like, there's just, there's just an energy and a positivity and an encouraging atmosphere. I just love it when they're here. The peace makers. It comes when you have that inner peace that comes from Jesus Christ. Because you're comfortable with who you are, where you are, what you are, what you look like, how you, you know, the gifts God's given you, and you're just like, this is who I am. I'm good with it. He's good with it. I'm good with it. And, and, and I'm inviting you to be good with it, you know. And then we walk into those difficult situations, and we bring God's peace. Look what James says. He says, the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable. Gentle, accommodating, full of mercy, good fruit, impartial, and not hypocritical. And the fruit that consists of righteousness is planted in peace among those who make peace. Romans 12, 18 says, uh, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all people. Do, do, you, do you kind of see what he's saying there? Yeah, there's times when you, you do your best and someone just has a, you know, some you know, splinters in their backside and they just can't get over whatever they're dealing with. But at least know from your end, you did everything you could. Uh, and here's the problem. 
Some of you went to churches where there were some really unpeaceful situations. Maybe you came out of that. Maybe you're hiding at home today because of that. You're like, I'm okay watching, but I'm not entering one of those places ever again because the people there just weren't nice to each other or to me or to the pastor or whatever the case may be. Some people who follow Jesus or profess to follow Jesus have gotten this wrong. They have not been very peaceable. Now, I'm, I'm happy to say in five and a half years in New Life, I haven't encountered that. Um, it's, it's really a, a blessing to be here. But some of you have been burned by this in other places. Um, people who think it's spiritual to complain and criticize. It's not spiritual. That's not a spiritual gift. That's not the highway to happiness. And when those people walk into a room or sit in a meeting or complain or whine or, you know, raise their beefs, they're not looking for the unity of the body. They're just looking for their voice to be heard and to control things. And it's a nasty, horrible situation. It's, and, and it scares people away from the faith. It's like, hey, why would I want to be a part of that? And Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers. People that don't always have to be right or get the last word. The people who have learned to bite their tongue. And, and, and to step back and, and, and before they make it a comment. The people who think the best of each other and, be, and, and not assume the worst. Blessed are the peace And so as, as, as much as it depends on you, live peaceably with all people. He says in Hebrews 12, verse 14, pursue peace with everyone and holiness. For without it, no one will see the Lord. And here's the reality. is something about religion that it, bring, it brings stuff up in our hearts and, and spirituality. And we've got to be careful as, as we grow in our faith, as we pursue on this highway to happiness, poor in spirit, mourning, you know, meekness, all these steps that Jesus has described here. He says, get to this place where now you're, you're looking, you've, have, you've got God's peace, you're looking to share God's peace with others. Um, but pursue that peace. Keep, you know, and, and, and holiness, for without it, no one will see the Lord. Sometimes being a peacemaker puts you in difficult situations. And sometimes there's a cost involved with being a peacemaker. Speaking up and doing the right thing in a situation where no one else is doing it. Uh, where, where you're trying to bring harmony and, and, and out, of, out of disorder. And, and, and those aren't always pleasant situations. I have a story here. Uh, and maybe you've heard it before, but I, like I said, every good story begs to be repeated. And this is the story of a little monk named Telemachus from Charles Colson's book, Loving God. In the fourth century, there lived an Asiatic monk who had spent most of his life in a remote community of prayer, raising vegetables for the cloister kitchen. When he was not tending his garden spot, he was fulfilling his vocation of study and prayer. Then one day, this monk named Telemachus felt that the Lord wanted him to go to Rome the capital of the world, the busiest, wealthiest, biggest city in the world. Telemachus had no idea why he should go there, and he was terrified at the thought, but as he prayed, God's directive became clear. How bewildered the little monk must have been as he set out on a long journey on foot over dusty roads westward, everything he owned on his back. Why was he going? He didn't know. What would he find there? He had no idea, but he obediently he went. Telemachus arrived in Rome during the holiday festival. You may know that the Roman rulers kept the ghettos quiet in those days by providing free bed and special entertainment called circuses. At the time Telemachus arrived in the city, the city was already bustling with excitement over the recent victory over the Goths. In the midst of this jubilant commotion, the monk looked for clues as to why God had brought him there, for he had no other guidance, not even a superior in a religious order to contact. Perhaps, he thought, it is not sheer coincidence that I have arrived at this festival time. Perhaps God has some special role for me to play. So talk, Telemachus let the crowds guide him, and the stream of humanity soon led him into the Colosseum, where the gladiator contests were to be staged. He could hear the cries of the animals in their cages beneath the floor of the great arena and the clamor of the contestants preparing to do battle. The gladiators marched into the arena, saluted the emperor, and shouted, We who are about to die salute thee. Telemachus shuddered. He had never heard of gladiator games before, but he had a premonition of the awful violence. The crowd had come to cheer men who, for no other reason than amusement, would murder each other. Human lives were offered for entertainment. As the monk realized what was going to happen, he realized he could not sit still and watch such savagery. Neither could he leave and forget. He jumped to the top of the perimeter wall and cried, in the name of Christ, forbear. Stop. The fighting began, of course. No one paid the slightest heed to the puny voice, so Telemachus pattered down the stone steps and leapt onto the sandy floor of the arena. He made a comic figure, a scrawny man in a monk's habit, dashing back and forth between muscular armed athletes. One gladiator sent him sprawling with a blow from his shield, directing him back to his seat. 
It was a rough gesture, though, almost a kind one. The crowd roared. But Telemachus refused to stop. He rushed into the way of those trying to fight, shouting again, In the name of Christ, forbear! The crowd began to laugh and cheer him on, perhaps thinking him part of the entertainment. Then his movement blocked the vision of one of the contestants. The gladiator saw a blow coming just in time. Furious now, the crowd began to cry for the interloper's blood. Run him through, they screamed. The gladiator he had blocked raised his sword and with a flash of steel struck Telemachus, slashing him down across the chest and into his stomach. The little monk gasped once more, in the name of Christ, forbear. Then a strange thing occurred. As the two gladiators in the crowd focused on the still form on the suddenly crimson sand, the arena grew deathly quiet. In the silence, someone on the top tier got up and walked out. Another followed. All over the arena, spectators began to leave until the huge stadium was emptied. There were other forces at work, of course, but that innocent figure lying in the pool of blood crystallized the opposition. And that was the last gladiatorial contest in the Roman Colosseum. Never again did men kill each other for the crowd's entertainment in the Roman arena. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. Now, you're probably not going to have that dramatic of an opportunity. But God will open doors for you to bring peace. And sometimes there's a cost involved. But that is the highway to happiness. Uh, doing the right thing, saying the right thing, so that the, the results that continue after you will, will, will be better for, for those around you. How can I be a peacemaker? First one, be grounded in the peace that comes through Jesus Christ. You can't share what you don't have. You can't bring to others what you have not experienced yourself. And so experience peace in Jesus Christ today by believing in him. He died for your sins. He rose again. By believing in him, you can have this eternal peace that comes through Jesus Christ. Two, <clears throat> share the good news of Peace with God through Jesus Christ. In the <clears throat> book of Ephesians, uh, chapter 6, it talks about the armor, spiritual armor. At the end of the whole book, he's like, here's what you need to do. Stand firm, you know, and, and put on the armor of God. And what part of that armor is the, the shoes of the gospel of peace, that, that your very mobility is you're bringing the message of peace around you as, as you've got the, you know, breastplate of righteousness and the shield of faith and sort of the spirit and the helmet of salvation and the belt of truth, all these, you know, other aspects of armor. But he's like, the shoes of the gospel of peace, where you're moving is you're bringing the message of peace to others. We want to be peacemakers. And what you need to understand is the people that don't have Jesus don't have peace. Every person in your class, every person that works around you, every, all the neighbors that don't have Jesus don't have peace. They may experience moments of ceasefire in their life. Everyone does, but they don't have lasting peace. And God invites us that the highway to happiness is people that share this good news of peace with others. How beautiful, it says in the Bible, are the feet of him who brings good news. Why? Because we're, we're, we're bringing this truth of new life and deliverance and freedom. Peace. Share the good news of peace with God through Jesus Christ. And three, uh, bring the, good, the peace of Christ into the world in which you live. You are an agent of peace in your office in the shop, the place in the gym where you work out. You are an agent of peace. You know, when you're playing hockey or basketball, you know, when you're hunting, and when you're, whatever you're doing with the people you're doing it with, you have an opportunity to bring the peace of Christ. You don't always have to, you know, wave a, you know, Jesus flag or anything crazy like that, but, but you are the representation, the visual representation of peace of Christ in that place, in your family gatherings, uh, everywhere you go. You bring peace when you're shopping, when you're at the restaurant, when, you know, when, when, whatever happens. And sometimes, you know, you don't get good service or something goes wrong or there's been a mistake made. But you bring the peace of Christ into that situation. Bring the peace of Christ into the world in which you live. Um, we can bring God's peace. And as we have experienced ourselves, Jesus said, this is the highway to happiness. This is the blessed life. 
is discovering what it means to experience peace and then to share peace with others. And the more we do this, the happier we are. When we understand what we have, and then you want to share that with others. And, and we need to pray for peace in our world. But ultimately, that peace will come through Jesus Christ. It won't come through, you know, diplomats getting together and bargaining and making treaties and blah, blah, blah. The ultimate peace that we need in our world comes through Jesus Christ. And you, if you know Jesus Christ, are now, are now authorized, <laughs> deputized to bring that peace to others. I'm going to invite the team up and uh, we're going to... Um, just sing a song focusing on Jesus. And that, that focus kind of brings our heart to that place of peace, right? Like uh, as we think about God and who he is and what he's done for us, it just it brings us stability to our life that we can share with others. And I'm going to invite you to, to just, you know, join us as, as we lead you in, the, in this song. But would you pray with me as we, as we prepare to transition? Lord, I ask that You would just remind us today what it means to be at peace with you. To know that you're okay with us because of what Jesus did for us and our faith in him. And I pray that that peace that you've, you've placed in our hearts would be, would be something that we could grow and that we could share and that we could walk in. I pray that this church would be a place of peace. That would be a safe family for anyone that comes in. And I pray for those maybe that have grown up in dysfunctional families and in hurtful families and abusive families that they could come here and find, find a, a loving father, you, the father God in heaven, and brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ that, that can encourage them and walk with them through life from now on. And so we thank you. Pray for anyone here that doesn't know the peace of Christ today that they would believe in you. Anyone watching online, that they would turn to you in faith and believe and find that peace that, 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 that just infects the whole soul and, and goes forth and, and enables us to be peacemakers in this world. I pray that we could bring a, make an impact in our city because we are peacemakers. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.